Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a point by serial correlation in SPSS. The point by serial correlation is a special case of the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient and is conducted using the same procedure. But rather than comparing two continuous variables, a point by serial correlation compares one dichotomous variable and one continuous variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, I have a variable status. It's categorical, in this case dichotomous. It only has two levels, 0 and 1. If I go up here to A1, you can see it's unsuccessful and successful. So let's assume this is a counseling program and we have participants who were unsuccessful in completing it and participants who were successful. And then looking at a test that measures functioning, say six months down the road, and that would be our other variable here, it's continuous. We have a value, a score, for each of the participants. And we want to see if there's a relationship between being unsuccessful or successful in the counseling treatment program and the functioning level six months later. So for data arranged in this manner and for the research question that we have to ask of this data, we could use an independent samples t-test. And I will run one of those after the point by serial to show you the similarity. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the point by serial correlation, and we'll begin with the assumptions. So there are assumptions for this statistic. As I mentioned, you do need to have a dichotomous variable and a continuous variable, and we have one dichotomous variable, one continuous variable. You want the continuous variable, in this case functioning, to be normally distributed. And we also want homogeneity of variance. Now the Levine's test will not automatically run as part of independent samples t-test or a point by serial correlation, but we can run it as part of ANOVA. But first we'll test to see if the variable functioning is normally distributed. So for that we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore. And we'll move functioning over to the Dependent List list box, go over to Plots, and uncheck stem and leaf. I'm going to check off histogram and normality plots with tests. Click continue and then OK. And we can see we have a non-statistically significant result for the Shapiro-Wilk. So we're going to assume that the variable functioning is normally distributed. An additional assumption of the point by serial correlation is that we do not have any outliers. And we can check that from the same output by going to the box plot for functioning. And we can see there's no values below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker here. So we're gonna assume we do not have any outliers here. I also want to run a Levine's test. I'm gonna do that as part of ANOVA. So I'm gonna to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, move functioning over to Dependent Variable and Status over to Fixed Factor or Independent Variable. And under options, I'm going to check off homogeneity tests for status. And I'm not interested in any of these other uh, features because I'm not really interested in the ANOVA. I just want to run the Levine's test. So I'll click continue and OK. And you can see for the Levine's test of equality of error variances, we have a non-statistically significant result. This value is above 0.05. So we're going to assume that we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So now to conduct the point by serial correlation, I'm going to go into Analyze, Correlation, Bivariate. And you can see I have the status and functioning variables here on the left. I'm just going to move them both over to the right in the variables list box. And I'm not going to make any changes under style, but under options, I'm going to add means and standard deviations and click continue. And you can see the correlation coefficients that are available here. Uh, by default, Pearson is checked off. I'm gonna leave that checked off. 
and I'm going to leave this as a two-tailed test of significance. Click OK. So we can see here in the descriptive statistics uh, for status the mean is 0.5 and this shouldn't be surprising as we had uh, 23 cases with 0 and 23 cases with 1 and then for functioning the mean was uh, almost 50. And then down here we're looking for the value of the correlation, the Pearson correlation. We can see it's 0.71. So a fairly strong correlation. And what this means is as we move from 0 to 1, we should expect a statistically significant change in the variable functioning. So remember, 0 was the unsuccessful category, and 1 was the successful category. So this wouldn't necessarily be surprising uh, that the participants that successfully completed the counseling program had higher functioning. It helps to view this in a scatter plot as well. If we go to graphs and legacy dialogues and down to scatter dot, select simple scatter and define. And you want the dichotomous variable to be on the x axis. And then in this case, the continuous will be on the y axis. I'll make no other changes here. And we can see that as we move from 0 to 1, the scores are higher. We're moving, we're moving up in, in functioning scores. If we want to add a line here, we'll double click on the graph and we're going to add the fit line at total and then close that out. And you can see the uh, y equals mx plus b. So here, here's y and the slope is here next to x and this would be the y-intercept here. So we get the equation for the line and we also get the r squared value here and it's 0.504. So keep this value in mind, the 9.52, because uh, now as I run an independent samples t-test, I'm going to show you the similarity. Go to compare means, independent samples t-test, status will be the grouping variable, functioning the test variable, no changes under options, and we're going to need to define the groups for status. Group 1 will be 0, and group 2 will be 1. So 0 is the unsuccessful group, and 1 is the su successful group. Click Continue, and then click OK. And we can see that we, do, we know we have equal variances because we ran the Levine's test, so we're interpreting this first row. And we can see we have a statistically significant difference between unsuccessful and successful. And take a look at the mean difference, negative 9.522. And up here for the slope, 9.52. So the absolute values of the slope and the mean difference are identical. So when running statistics and attempting to answer the research question we had of the data, uh, in this case, a point by serial correlation or an independent samples t-test would both be valid statistics to answer that question. I hope you found this video on conducting a point by serial correlation in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.